Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python. And in this video, we're going to cover how we can hack the program we wrote in the last video, our Caesar Cipher program, using a technique called brute force. Let's jump right in. In the previous video, we learned how we can write the Caesar Cipher to encrypt messages. And now we are going to learn an approach to actually break a Caesar Cipher and decrypt a message, even if you don't know the key. If you want to follow along with the book, you can head over to inventwithpython.com. You can also find the link in the description down below. Now messages encrypted with the Caesar cipher are pretty easy to break because all we need to do is to figure out what the key is to encrypt the message. And this approach of trying out all the different keys is called brute force. There are some cryptographic principles like Kirchhoff's principle and Shannon's maxim that states that a cipher being used should still be secure even if everyone knows how the cipher works and if someone has a cipher text. So we need to assume that someone trying to break our code actually knows the system, so we need to ensure that the actual cipher is secret. Now in order to write the code for our hacking program that's going to use a brute force approach to decrypt messages encrypted with Caesar cipher, we're going to open idle and here we are going to create a new file. We are going to save this file and we can, for instance, call it caesarhacker.py. And we also need to make sure that we installed Piperclip and that we saved it in the same directory as our program. Now, as when we wrote our Caesar Cypher program, we have a message available to us. In this case, it's the encrypted message that we want to hack and decrypt. And we have a list with the available symbols that are being used with our Caesar Cypher. And what we need to figure out is which key is being used to basically shift those individual characters using our symbols constant to decrypt our message. Now to figure out the key, we are going to use a for loop and we see a new keyword that we haven't seen before, which is called range, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. But what we basically do is we take the length of the symbols, so the number of characters inside of our symbols constant, and that number is then being used as the upper bound of our for loop here. So basically we are starting from a value of zero all the way up to, but not including the length of the symbols string. We then have a empty translated string and we're using this to construct our decrypted message based on different keys that we try out. And it's important that on each iteration we reset the translated string here to be empty so we can try out what the result is with a different key. After that, we loop through each symbol in our message. So we start with the lowercase g, all the way up to and including uppercase m. Now, if any of those characters inside of our message string is included in our symbols constant, then we're gonna get back the index of that symbol by using the find function. And then we subtract the key, again, that we set here by using this loop from the symbol index and this way we define a new translated index. Now when we use the key, we basically always go to the left starting from those symbols. So if we had a key of three, for example, and we had, for example, uppercase D, then we would shift three positions to the left if you used a key of three, which is basically what we do here. So therefore we need to cover the case if we actually have a key of three and we have the symbol B here, then of course we would run out of the range here and therefore we need to make sure that we in this case would basically start from the end here and then basically continue back on our cipher wheel. Now this is a wraparound case that we cover here. So we are checking if our translated index is less than zero. And if that's the case, then we're going to take the translated index and we are going to add the length of the symbols to it. So this way, because the translated index will then be negative in this case, we're basically starting here from the end, moving to the left. We don't have to cover the case that the translated index is greater than the length of the symbols because we're only interested in decrypting the message, not encrypting the message. So when we decrypt a message, we would generally move to the left. If you're interested in encrypting a message, we would move to the right. Now after that, we use our translated index to reference the respective symbol that's being used, working with that specific key, and we are adding it to the end of our translated string that we are creating. Now, if a character inside of our message is not in our symbols array, then we're just going to add that specific character to our translated string because we basically cannot decrypt that particular character. And then at the end of our loop here, where we loop through each of the different characters in our message, 
we would then print out the translated string that we constructed. And we also include the key that we have been using. And then of course we would continue looping over the outer loop. So then we would start the same process again with the next key. So for instance, we may want to start with the key of one, then two, then three, then four. And with each of those keys, we are going to take a look at what the message looks like with that specific key. And once we get something back that's making sense, that's actually the decrypted message, then we know which key is being used. And from that point forward, we can basically decrypt any other message that has been encrypted using that specific key. So let's have a look at the output here. We can head over to run and then press run module or press F5 instead. And now we can see all the possible options being printed out here. So here we can see the different keys that are being used. First, we have a key of zero and we go all the way up to a key of 65. And we stop at 65 because our range function here only goes up to the length of the symbols. And our symbols here have a length of a total of 66 characters in here, but the range function does not include the upper bound. So therefore we go all the way from zero to 65. And this is exactly the keys that we see over here. So now we can see what the output is with each of the different keys. Of course, with a key of zero, we'll be basically not shifting any of those messages. So we are going to see the exact same message that we saw before. And if you have a look at that, most of that is very cryptic. So it's not the right key. But if we look down, we can see here with a key of 13, we actually get something human readable. So here it says, this is my secret message. So we know that with a key of 13, we can decrypt those messages. And this is a brute force approach because we just tried out every possible key and then looked at the result. And this is all that was needed to figure out what the key is and therefore also what the decrypted message is. And that makes the Caesar cipher insecure because we only need to figure out what the key is. And once we figure that out, we can decrypt all the messages that are being used. So it's very easy to hack the Caesar cipher. We just saw that we used the range function inside of our code to hex the Caesar cipher. So let's have a closer look at that particular function. So in general, we would use the range function mostly in for loops. So here, this is the typical syntax we would be using for a certain variable in a range, and then we can pass a value to it. And if we just pass a single value to our function, then we would always start at zero and go all the way up, but not including that number. So in this case, for a range of three, we would start with zero, then one, then two, and then we would stop. To see an example of that, we can simply print out hello, and this should be printed three times for a value of i that is zero, then one, and then two. To see that a little bit more clearly, we can loop again, this time with a range of six. So we're going to start at a value of zero and then go all the way up to a value of five. So in this case, we are printing out the value of i. And if we look at that, we can indeed see that we start at zero and then we go all the way up to, but not including the value of six. And with this knowledge, it makes sense why we use the range function here, because here, instead of using i, we just wrote key, which is our variable. And in this case here, we passed a value of the length of the symbols to it. So the length of the symbols here, again, in this case, we have 66 entries, 66 characters inside of our symbols constant. So that's going to be used. And therefore, when we pass symbols to the length function, we get back a value of 66. And if we pass that to the range function, then we go from zero all the way up to 65. Now let's have a look at the practice question. And in this case, we only have a single one. In this case, we should break the following ciphertext, decrypting one line at a time because each line has a different key. So let's get started by taking the first line here. We're going to copy it and we can switch over to our caesarhacker.py program. And we're going to paste this in here in the message string. And then we can run our program. Again, it works by pressing F5. And here we can see the different results that we would get. So let's see if there's anything useful in here. And here we can see for key of 34, we have, I love my kitty. So in the first line, we are using key 34. Let's repeat the same step for the second line because we know that uses a different key. So again, we're going to replace our message here and then run our program again. And here, if we look at the results and we scroll down, we can see that with key 44, we get the text, my kitty loves me. Therefore, 44 is, is the key for decrypting the second line. 
and we basically repeat the same again for the next line. So again, we replace the message here. And in this case here, we need to make sure that we escape that quotation mark, so with a backslash. Let's run our program again. So now as we take a look at the different results, we can see that with the key of seven, we get together we are happy as can be. So key seven is the right key for that row. And again, we continue with the next row here, pasting that as a message here and running our program again. And looking through the results, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that for a key of 32, we get back, though my head has suspicions. So key 32 is right for this row. And then we just continue doing the same thing again. So we take this other row here, paste that into the message and run this again. And then can be a little tedious, but we basically are always able to get the result. And here we can see right away for key 45, we see the messages that I keep under my head. So 45 is the right key for that row. And we just have two more to go. So let's take this one, replace our message. And the great thing is that we just needed to write the program once and it basically helps us decrypt all those messages with the different keys. And here we can see if we scroll up a little bit that for key 11 we get of what I shrank to the size of a red. So key 11 is the right one. And then we have the final row. So let's copy that, replace our message, run it again. And here we can see that with a key of one, we get back, yeah, she would probably eat me. And if we have a look at the entire decrypted message here, we can see this is a text. I love my kitty, my kitty loves me. Together we happy as can be, though my head has suspicions that I keep under my head. Of what if I shrank to the size of a rat? Yeah, she would probably eat me. It was a little tedious to basically run each line of code through our program. But again, it's very simple code that we used. We just used a brute force approach and it allowed us to decrypt every line of code, even though each line had a different key that was being used. We learned how we can use the brute force approach to hack our Caesar Cipher program. Caesar Cipher is not very secure because it doesn't have too many potential keys. And therefore, in the next video, we are going to learn about a new cipher, the transposition cipher. See you guys in the next video.